Hey Vanity Fair, I'm Zach King, and over the years I've gotten to amass a fun collection of props that I've used in my magic videos, like this one, the giant toy car. So I'm gonna take you in the studio, show you around. All right, so this is my office, and this is where I not only work, but also keep some of my favorite things throughout my childhood, and little things that have inspired me, as well as memorabilia from my videos, like this one, the Souvenir of France. It's a Vine video where I grab it and uh, take the Eiffel Tower. Merci beaucoup. The fun part about working with miniatures, to me, is it's really tactile. It's something you can grab, you can play with, you could block in the frame, but it also means you have to get it 100% perfect. So that means your distance from this to the camera, but also the item in the background has to be perfect. So you're lining up these three different elements and it's fun, but it takes a ton of time to get it perfect. If it's not perfect, you know, you gotta fly back to France and reshoot. One of my favorite videos that I've done on TikTok was based on one of my favorite books growing up, Harry Potter. And of course, everyone wants to be able to fly on a broomstick. So we created this illusion where with a mirror and the broomstick and pants glued to it, it looked like I could be floating. You know, there's always challenges when we're filming. The hardest one on that video is we were riding and we'd chip the mirror a little bit or the boosted board. Like, the dance between the cameraman and myself in the videos is always an intense choreography, and that one especially, because I'm on an electric skateboard and I have to control that, as well as hold this, this rig of the mirror and the broomstick and the pants, which is actually rather heavy with one hand. It's fun though, when, when you get that choreography down, it feels like you just had an amazing dance and you know, the video turned out awesome, I love it. I also love exploring ideas that kind of bend reality, and a good example of that is this chair which I keep in my office. It looks like a regular chair, right? But if I sit down, oh, it's not quite a regular chair. It's actually what we call an illusion chair. So it's based on the perspective of where the camera is. It's actually, as you can see, a bunch of curved cut wood, perfectly to line up just from one single angle over there. So there's a lot of meticulous work that goes up front in designing these illusions from sketches, design, 3D blueprints and CAD models, and, and that's only half of it. Then we take that into reality. When you're talking about making a piece of furniture or a set, you actually have to just line up the camera and have it there during the entire construction process. And it's a bummer because a lot of times you end up building it and if you didn't line up the camera right, you have to redo it. So you gotta be detail oriented. So this next room that we're gonna be going to is one of my favorites in the studio. It stores some really fun treats. Let's go check it out. Okay, so this is a special room because this is where we store our medium to large props. Now, we store the extra small props in a special other room, which I'll show you in a second. So what you see in here is pretty much all the props I've used over the years, ranging from snack items like this giant Oreo here. We've got uh, this little miniature plane. I was thinking about the name of the Wright brothers, you know, who were some of the first inventors of flight. And I was like, wouldn't it be funny if there was like, what if there was a wrong brother? Like what, what would his invention have been like? And he would take a miniature, wind it up, throw it, and then the plane would circle back and it'd become real and you know almost crash into him. That's where that idea came from. So I got this prop online the night before we had to shoot. It arrived and I thought it came like assembled, like ready to go out of the box, but no, I had to build this. It actually took me hours. It looked, and there's like even a complicated rubber band system to how do you make these like spin and turn on. I spent way too much time super gluing and burning my fingers making this, but you know, that actually happens a lot. I always try to look in the fine print when I'm buying props online now is like, is it pre-built? That is absolutely key, if possible. Now, a lot of the props that we make here are actually made in-house using design and 3D printers like this one. So I wanted to do a video where I was playing catch with myself. I would throw it this way and then catch it close up to frame with this small little football. And you can see this one is actually just a perfectly printed replica and we'll paint it brown. It's all hand painted with the little Wilson logo there. But it's, uh, it's fun that we can make things uh, really accurate to size and just to the size that we need so it's at the right distance from camera. You know, my videos tap into a lot of different themes and one of them uh, tends to be games and sports. So I've got things that are golf clubs, I've got uh, little mini bikes. I've even got, um, this is a special one because I did a video with Tony Hawk where I was skateboarding, showing him a skateboard trick. And during the trick, it transitions to this little miniature. And uh, he actually signed this one for us, so that's cool. Some props are a mix of 3D printed 
as the base and then covered with fabric like this one that was used in a safety video commercial we got to do for an airline. And this is uh, actually really amazing craftsmanship, uh, all real zippers done. And in terms of the 3D printing, like things like this, my team will do that. They'll design it in 3D software, like in CAD, and then we'll 3D print it. And we'll usually do several different sizes so that when we show up on set, we don't know exactly where the position's gonna be based on, it could be a different camera, it could be a different lens that we're using that day. So it's crazy amount of work, but we make three or four different versions just to scale the size. This one was a completely custom design where it's a little penguin. We needed to do an illusion, which was having the audience guess which belly color of the penguin is darker. And um, so we, we printed a series of these to show off just little tricks that your mind and your eyes play on you, even though it's not reality. When we're designing these tricks that actually play off real life principles, such as you know color illusions, where it has to trick your mind, those take a lot of time because we actually have to have all of our team and our friends go through these surveys and seeing what really works, what's the science behind it. And again, if that doesn't work for somebody, like out of the 99 and there's one person it doesn't work for, we still try to engineer it so every single person that sees it can have the same effect. So, you know, things like color illusions are difficult to create. I think a lot of people, if they were to come here, they'd be like, you love like these miniatures and doll houses stuff. And it kind of looks like that because we have a miniature house set that we just used in a recent video. And it's got a, a, a mailbox. And what we did is in the video, I walk up and it, I, I, you end up realizing I'm, I'm really large and you see that this was scaled down, but it was like a forced perspective trick. And I come down and grab the mail, but then the twist on it was when I turn around to go inside the house, the house was miniature. That video took us literally months to concept and block. We'd go out to the park for an afternoon, figure out what was wrong, come back. And I think we did that several times and finally we went out and shot it and we just had a bunch of teenagers standing out there like eyeballing us, like looking, giving us the strangest looks. It sounds so ridiculous, but the reason this video took months and months to do and multiple attempts is because we actually just needed the certain level of grading on the field. We needed a field that went down um, just like an inch every two feet. And we actually spent a lot of time, our team looking for that field. And uh, so we found a field, finally made it happen. But yeah, the smallest little variables in our videos make a big difference, such as the grade of the field. People chalk up a lot of our videos to CG and just think, oh, it's a CG house that they replaced. But no, it's actually real. It has real windows and doors. And, uh, and that gives it a tactile feel. That's the reason I got into filmmaking is because everything was real. I've watched Jurassic Park and Indiana Jones and you knew those tanks were real and you knew the dinosaurs, they had like real creatures that they were interacting with and that's why I love film because you can feel it on set. You're not walking into a, a green screen room and just pretending. This is a special deck of cards because uh, I made this video with my kids where it looked like we were creating a house of cards in the foreground but then one of my sons walks around in the background and knocks it over. We came up with this concept pretty last minute, so I just told one of my producers, hey, we gotta spray paint the symbols, and what we do is we'll lay out these poster boards and then project the image, and then we'll trace it with paint and uh, create stencils and then spray paint it. It's always fun to have large items. It's the house of cards for you. Sometimes I'm, I'm surfing the internet and I'll just see this giant thing, and I'll be like, I don't know what that's for, but I'm gonna buy it. And so we bought this giant beach ball so far, no ideas have come to mind yet, but uh, I, think, I think something cool will come out of that. It also goes for things like this giant watch. I mean, obviously you need to t tell time, but you really need to watch this big. I, I don't know what this is for. That's the beauty of ideas. For me, I do just randomly buy things online. If it feels like I could get some future inspiration from that, that's why there's such an eclectic range of items still here that we haven't shot with. So out of all the rooms in the studio, this room is by far my favorite. I've actually only been inside once because it requires a big shrinkage process. This is where we house our extra small props. Take a look inside. Oh, there's, there's Lucas in there. Hi, Lucas. Hey, what's up? All right, I'll let them get back to work. So that is the extra small room. All right, so this is what I call the mirror room, and this is a really fun place for us to actually duplicate our props or our camera gear, like take this camera, for example. And, you know, it's actually pretty valuable to have. But no, let me show you the actual reveal here. I don't usually show this off, but this is Lucas. Hi, Lucas. And uh, we've actually learned to be in sync for this trick because we'll do it on live streams or we'll do this on 
on YouTube or video calls with fans to things like this. And we just have practiced so many times that we're kind of in sync for stuff. This is also an area that I'll use for things like a painting where I get completely covered in acrylic and, and crawl out of the wall. You know, that'll be done here. But it's a fun mirror to have. Trip people out in real life. Lucas and I will come out here and just practice over and over and play with different objects. Obviously we have to have duplicates of everything, but we do keep duplicates in our storage of so many items ranging from toothbrushes, toilet paper. So we were constantly thinking of gags that we could do um, live. This is an installation that we actually built in order to do zoom with our fans uh, that didn't require any post work. And those again are some of my favorite effects because they're done in camera. All it requires is that extra amount of practice and, and hours and hours of just making sure things look exactly correct. So I hope you guys enjoyed that exclusive prop tour and you got a little inside look into the magic. I'll see you around the internet. And just in case you were wondering, it's a common question, I do do all my own sound effects. <laughs>